Hello everyone, this is Graciela from Methods in Ecology and Evolution and today we have David and Ed. David Jacobi is from the Marine Biological Association of the UK and Ed Brooks is from the Cape Eleuthera Institute. They are talking with us about developing um, their article in Methods which is developing a deeper understanding of animal movements and spatial dynamics through novel application of network analysis. Um, hello David. Hi Graziella. And hello Ed. Hi, good morning Graziella. Hi. What is the main idea behind your work, David? Um, so animal behaviour and animal movement particularly is a highly complex um, issue and really for me the main issue of the paper is to bring together two quite disparate but rapidly advancing fields of biology and that's biotelemetry, which is essentially tagging um, animals, free, free living and free ranging animals with electronic tags which are capable of storing and recording information about the animals' movements and um, the environment that they're moving within, but also social network analysis as well, which is another rapidly developing field which essentially looks at how social behaviours and social interactions between animals can actually uh, influence group dynamics and animal behaviour in itself. So uh, in terms of the, the connectivity that we see within the social networks, I, we actually found this to be highly applicable to understanding animal movements from uh, electronic tag data essentially. So that, that's the, the main driver of the, the paper really, um, and also to try and encourage more hypothesis-led telemetry-based studies. Um, so to apply a social network's approach to tele tele uh, telemetric data, you can essentially use uh, nodes which are individual locations, um, which are spread in a specific spatial array, and then you can look at the connectivity of those locations via the animals that move between them. So that's the, the basis of uh, the paper and the ideas behind it. Um, maybe Ed can add, add some more to that if you'd like to. Yeah, sure, I can, I can certainly do that. Um, the really exciting thing from my point of view is, uh, is the more holistic nature of this analysis. I, I come from more of the telemetry side of things. So, um, in, in the past, current telemetry sort of studies, do, you know, we have these huge data sets, but dealing with them is, is basically, um, we're using very coarse analysis to, to, to ask very coarse questions with these data sets. And we're not really using them to their full potential. Now, the beauty of this, uh, this analysis, and I think it's going to be, but we're applying this to, to acoustic telemetry data, but I think it can also be applied uh, in the future to, to satellite telemetry data and also some other things. Is that it, it actually not only analyzes specific points in time, but it analyzes, analyzes the animal movements and interaction between multiple points, like multiple points in time, uh, all in one uh, holistic kind of analysis. And to me, that's the most exciting thing, and, and it will allow us to really get the most out of these huge data sets which the technology is generating right now. Thank you. And how does your work advance methodology in ecology and evolution, David? Um, well, I think Ed's rightly touched on this point, um, that we, we generate these huge data sets from telemetric data. Um, we're talking hundreds of thousands of data points quite often. Um, and really, there's there's no tried and tested methods for distilling these uh, huge data sets down into manageable chunks. Um, so in terms of how it advances things, I think current analyses really uh, take these data points from a very static format. Um, they, they look at things like detection frequencies at specific receiver locations. Um, there are some sort of home range analyses that you can use. Uh, things such as kernel density utilization and minimum convex polygons, which can be used to map, say, an animal's home range and how that expands through time. But really, these are all very descriptive analyses. Uh, so we, we try to take this forward not only by improving the visualization techniques involved in this, um, but also to really add a much more empirical um, component to the, to the analysis. And by looking at these connectivities and the, the metrics associated with animals which move between different locations, we can actually begin to understand a little bit more about how important specific areas are to animals that might be passing, 
passing through them. Um, and in that respect, this approach could be um, extremely broad. You know, it, uh, the paper actually discusses in itself um, the, the behavior of two different species of shark, uh, one in a shark, uh, one in a temperate um, location, and one in a spatial array of acoustic receivers in a tropical location. Um, and I think in this respect, the sharks are actually a very good model. This is a, acoustic telemetry is a technique that is used very frequently in, uh, in, marine, um, in the marine environment, and it allows us to track round the clock how these animals are moving and where they're moving. Um, so given the, the fact that we're using sharks, it, it illustrates how this approach can be used, but it also puts a certain level of importance on things like the, the site fidelity and the ranging behavior of these animals as well, and particularly in sharks that are actually, to, they've, they've seen rapid declines globally, both in pelagic species and coastal species. I think it's inc incredibly important to understand how these animals are utilizing their areas from a conservation and a management perspective as well. So it's really being able to statistically determine whether animals are using an area randomly to uh, use things, use various manipulations and null modeling to determine whether specific environmental features are actually influencing how and why an animal is moving. Uh, and also, it, it really enables you to portion up the data into manageable chunks uh, and allows you to test specific hypotheses, say, looking at whether one sex uses an area differently to another sex, or um, whether you find seasonal trends or various other temporal trends. And again, I've touched on this before, it's this, it's this idea of incorporating the spatial and temporal component together in one sort of manageable um, and easy to manipulate package. And I, I guess that's, for me, um, the, the, ma the major advance that I'm hoping that this type of study will show. Um, but again, I'll pass over to Ed, I'm sure he's got more insight on this. Uh, that, was, uh, that was great, David. I, I don't really have too much more to add to that, to be honest with you, that was pretty comprehensive. Um, I think I've got more to add to the next question. So. Fantastic. So, who do you think would apply the method? We really hope that this could be quite a broad technique that can be used by anyone that actually uses both terrestrial and marine based telemetry um, equipment. So, um, our study, as I said, focuses on acoustic telemetry in the marine environment, but we have uh, numerous examples of different biologging techniques in forested environments to look at behavior of uh, elusive mammals, for example. Um, there are infrared traps, uh, again, using telemetry studies, things like uh, radio frequency ID tags, so um, uh, pit tagging of animals as well, small, small rodents and uh, reptiles as well. So I think anywhere where you have this uh, presence and absence of specific individuals at specific locations, which are accompanied by a time stamp, a time and date stamp, they're essentially the four ingredients to um, which you can then apply to a network's approach. So we're really hoping that this can be uh, pursued by many different people in many different um, telemetry-based studies. And, and it's, it's just those four components for me that are uh, important for doing that. Um, again, I'll pass over to Ed, though. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, the, the, the fundamental data point that you get from the all telemetry studies is exactly as David said, is there's a, the, an individual location and a time and a date. Um, and there's a million different telemetry devices that actually give that. Um, now, like I, I mentioned before, we're applying this technique to acoustic telemetry data, which the, the, the definition of a node is more traditional, I think, in the fact that it is a, a fixed location at the time. Just, uh, we've just got another study where we're looking at um, satellite telemetry data of data generated from, from uh, pop-up satellite tags for uh, oceanic white tip sharks. Now, these guys are moving um, almost as far north as Bermuda and all, all the way as far south as, uh, as Puerto Rico. Um, and by defining nodes as degrees in latitude or something similar, um, we'll be able to use this technique or apply this technique in a similar fashion. I think. To me, that, that, that's a really exciting thing. It's just a broad applicability to, to nearly every type of telemetry data that there is out there. That sounds very exciting. Thank you, David and Ed, for being with us today. No problem. Thank you, Rasala. <laughs>